Sacramento Film Works, where we bring to you all things film. I'm Craig Deleuze. And I'm Amy Henry. We are very excited about the show that you're about to watch. We've got an exciting guest. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sacramento Filmworks is sponsored by the Northern California Filmmakers Coalition, which provides filmmakers an opportunity to learn and network with film industry professionals from throughout the Sacramento region. Join us each Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Access Sacramento, 4623 T Street, Suite A, Sacramento, California. We'll see you at the movies. And welcome back. We are so excited about the couple of guests that we're about to meet. This, of course, is our spotlight segment of the show. And if you've been watching the show for a while, we get a chance to highlight local folks right here in our area that are doing some really unique things. And I am very, very pleased to introduce to you uh, a guy who is doing some really amazing things in media. His name is Mr. Onyx Pike, and he is here with a special guest that also has come alongside to help him. Her name, and you've probably seen her before, but her name is Maymay Jean. And Onyx is the CEO of Five Star Marketing and Multimedia. Multimedia. So welcome to the show, you guys. So Thank excited you. that you're here. You. So excited. Thanks for being here with us. So, you've got a lot going on. We do, we do. So and tell us about what your company is doing. Well, we are actually a traditional multimedia company, so we do audio video production. And actually, Mamie plays a lot bigger role than a lot of people uh, know because she actually directs all of our productions. Oh, wow. So. You're, you're working hard. <laughs> <laughs> and Onyx, tell us how long have you been um, in business now? Since 2005. 2005. Yes. And it's centered right here in Sacramento or the general Sacramento Eldorado area? Hills. El Dorado yes. Hills. Okay. And so the full scope of Five Star Media does what? We do commercials. We do uh, full feature audio, I mean full feature productions. And oh, okay. that's kind of where and how Mamie and I met. Uh, it was through mutual friends. We started getting involved in editing and we wanted to make sure that we were able to uh, help small business owners with commercials because a lot of small businesses tend to be intimidated by the budget. Mm. And so we brought in Mamie because I really don't know anything about production. I mean, it's kind of funny because even though I own the company, I really don't own, uh, know much about it. So uh -huh. I had to bring in experts such as Mamie. Right. Um, we've got a, a team of very experienced uh, editors as well as uh, other people, actors and people that actually know the business. So they've kind of guided us through. I've done, my primary focus has been on the business side of it. Okay. And putting people together. And tell me a little bit also about the really important piece, the marketing side of the mm -hmm. business, because that's crucial. Yeah, and again, uh, when it comes to traditional marketing, uh, people think web design, graphic design, and events, uh, so we, started bringing in, bringing in the video side of it. And from the video side of it, we kind of integrated the two. That's why it's marketing and multimedia. Okay. Um, so. Well, you and I got a chance to talk, and I got a chance mm. to talk to you. And I'm really excited to tell you all about what Onyx is doing for the film industry. It's something that is revolutionary. I think I can use that word somewhat, yeah. but because you guys are doing a new thing. Um, it's called? Real Network TV. Real Network TV. Yes. Let's talk about that. So tell us generally what Real Network TV is about. Well, coming from the marketing side of it, it that's really my expertise. And so I knew how I know how to get the word out. I know how to, to get a lot of products in front of consumers. And with production side, specifically with Mamie coming to us with actually a problem. She said there's a lot of independent film producers that don't have an arena or a market to go to for their, their uh, film. They go to traditional uh, distributors who tend to be very intimidating, it's hard to negotiate. Once they do negotiate, a lot of times they lose all of the, uh, or a majority of the profits. Yeah. And then when it comes time to auditing, they can't do it. Yeah, I was gonna because say, they're up the against auditing. a big beast. So mm -hmm. uh, what we are doing with Real Network TV is we're creating almost like a video on demand concept. 
So mm -hmm. now independent film producers can actually submit their work to us, we upload it, and then we are focusing on the marketing side of it. So people will come to the site, which is realnetwork.tv, okay. they'll select their movie, they'll be given the option of either downloading it or viewing it, and as soon as it's download or downloaded or viewed, they, the actual owner of the work will get immediately compensated. And then you also have, uh, with Real Network TV, I think we talked about Primetime. Yes, Primetime Live is actually the channel that features the live. Uh, the live yes, events. Yes, so that's, being, that's going to be separate, but available on that platform. So Primetime Live is where all of the fights and all of the high school events and all of the special uh, streaming video events will be hosted. On. Wow. So you guys have been able to come up with a solution to meet the if I could say the average Joe mm -hmm. that needs to get their product out, they've been up against really the hard hitters, which I know you have come <laughs> across. Mm -hmm. um, and you've created a platform now that affords people to be able to get their product. It doesn't mm -hmm. just have to sit at home. No, you're right. Yeah. That's, That's what's right. great about it. Yeah. It's great that an independent producer could do a movie and if they don't know where to go and there's a lot to spend after you've produced it, that you could go on a channel like ours and have a place to put it mm -hmm. and then they could stream it back to Chicago to Aunt Bessie or whoever and they could see it. So that's the beauty of it. it can go to other states also. Oh, wow. It's not just here. Just not here. You know, and they'd have a place to put it. And they'll help market it theirself also, you know. And, it, that's and that we're not they're not on a contract where they have to stay with us either. Okay. If no. something great would happen after a few months of people viewing it, then they could pull it and move on. Wow. Well congratulations to both of you. That is fantastic. Tell us again because this is I think this is really a great thing that you've done mm -hmm. and you've been working on it again like we mentioned t since 2006. Is that right? It's been in progress since about 2006, 2007. Um, okay. But it's one of those things that we started with our streaming video platform and we did that out of a need for a lot of people not being able to stream some of their special events and once we built the platform we didn't have any use for it after that oh. so you know i mean we still do but it wasn't a, a main focus of our our business okay and so by combining all four of these different platforms it's going to become a lot more well tell us again where can platform. folks find you on the web real network TV. And that's, that's spelled R E E L. Okay, so that's R E E L yes. Network dot TV. Yes. All right, great. And Facebook? The same. Same. All right. Well, thanks again for being here. Thank you guys, you for us. congratulations. You. We're going to have to have you back when we see things up and running back in Absolutely. 2015. And we're looking for shorts, too. I just want people oh, to know that. Oh, looking for shorts. People All right. People have a place to do shorts. Okay. Great. Thanks again <laughs> for, for being here. Thank really you. appreciate it. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. To become a part of our live studio audience and to meet and greet film industry professionals, visit our website at www.ncfc.tv. Welcome back. You know, it's a real honor to be able to be here and be able to serve with you and be able to, to host the show as a journalist. You know, there was a time in which, you know, you didn't see many African Americans actually in media, true. local or national. That's very true. The times have changed. Um, there's been a lot of changing since, what, 10, 20 years ago plus. And so this show is going to open the eyes of some and really excite others, I believe. So. Let's tell them who we've got on board. We've got uh, one of the, I believe, the first African-American uh, female journalists and local media personalities in Northern California uh, with us today, and that would be Trudy Talaferro. Trudy, thank you so much for joining us. It is my pleasure to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Now, um, as I'm sure I'm, our audience is, is, is interested to hear, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you got into doing media and local news. Well, I started in reality television. Really? Shock, right? <laughs> like, yeah. That's what you're experiencing today. But in fact, live television, when I started at age eight, was actually reality TV. And I was on a program called NTD out of Detroit, Michigan, which is my birthplace and home and graduated to things like Starlet Stairway and Mickey's 
movie time party, Milky's movie time party, and all these wonderful little children's fair shows that were all about talent. And I sang and danced my way to nowhere, as I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, it was wonderful preparation because it was live. And whatever went out, whatever came out of your mouth, was actually what was there. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't go back. <laughs> now, my mother had the presence of mind when she heard about something called kinescope, and I want to talk about that just briefly because it is film related. In fact, it is a film process, and this is about film, which mm -hmm. Sacramento Film Works. Right. So, kinescope was a uh, 16 millimeter film camera rolled up to a monitor in the studio where live was taking place. They recorded it on film and then bicycled it around for the various programs and various areas in the country uh, that needed to have it at a different time frame. So I really was on film very early on and didn't realize it. But graduating from high school um, and really de determining at that point in time that I wanted to do something in the media, I went on to college, um, was a double major, radio, television, film, and theater, because mm. I really loved theater and was in a lot of theatrical productions when I was young. Um, moved west, moved to Sacramento, and then all of a sudden found myself in a situation where I had the opportunity to be the first African-American woman at KCRA wow. television. Wow. And NBC so, affiliate. NBC here. affiliate here, mm -hmm. yeah. And then went on from there to Los Angeles and from Los Angeles back to the San Francisco Bay Area and ended up on Channel 2 with Dennis Richmond. Wow. And I think you have a little bit of a clip you know, on this, I don't show, you? I, I grew yeah. up watching uh, mm -hmm. Channel 2 News and Dennis <laughs> Richmond. And, you know, it was funny. Once I saw the clip, I recognized him. <laughs> so why don't we all watch the clip? <laughs> Good evening. This is the Sunday edition of Action News. We're on a little late tonight because of the basketball game. Claude Mann is ill tonight. Dennis Richmond is filling in. And in the news, history's worst air crash and a surprise resignation. But the big story, a dramatic plea. 20-year-old Patricia Hurst is still being held tonight. It's been a month since she was abducted by members of the SLA. They took her from her Berkeley apartment. And today, Mr. and Mrs. Randolph Hurst asked their daughter's abductors for assurance that Patty is alive and well. You know, that looks fantastic. One of the things that really strikes me is there's such a difference now in how reporters report the news. Uh, talk to us a little bit about, you know, your reporting style, what you had to do then compared to what we have to do now. Well, first of all, you probably noticed that I was looking down and yeah. looking up and looking down and looking up. There were no teleprompters in those days. If they were used, they were only used in very rare instances, and they weren't used for people who did weekend news. I was the weekend news anchor with actually a guy by the name of Claude Mann, and as you heard in the clip, he wasn't there that night. So Dennis, with his wonderful fro, uh -huh. my <laughs> husband often says that he competed with Angela Davis for the size. <laughs> of Afro, but Dennis was a very talented young man, also out of Detroit. So here you have two, yes, he graduated from Wayne State University in Detroit. And so here you have two African Americans on the news, which was pretty much unprecedented. I think we may have been the first two in the Bay Area to have that happen to us. Anyway, back to how things have changed. Um, we got teleprompters. We didn't get videotape for quite a while, actually, um, in terms of being able to do daily newscasts on videotape. What we did was we went out and we filmed in the field. Belva Davis, who was at the station at the time, whose husband Bill Moore was a cameraman, was one of the first black cameramen in the Bay Area. And he and I worked together on a couple of stories, including the SLA story and the Patty Hearst story. Um, we really uh, changed the face of filmmaking and the focus of where we put our cameras. We actually went and put them in the faces of African Americans, which was not done 
We always saw what the white response was, but you never saw an African-American response, or very rarely did you see that. Nor did you see other minorities. There were no Asians being considered in the filmmaking industry, uh, or in the news industry, I should say. There were no um, Hispanics who were in the news industry. So we took that and we changed the face of who you saw and what kind of responses you were getting from your audience. Some of the critical stories of that period, of course, were the Patty Hearst and SLA stories. Mm -hmm. um, that same time period, or a little bit after that, you saw the murder of Moscone and Dan mm -hmm. White in San Francisco. So I was living a tremendous amount of history. Wow. And um, the joy about all of this was my kids were getting some of this information as well, as well as the general public, and, well, and I really loved that part of it. You're not, you know, not just uh, living history, but I mean, you had an opportunity to, to interview some real historical figures. You, can you tell us just a little bit, uh, it, I guess this is the time ah. for you to, let's name drop. I want to hear some of the folks you had a chance to interview. See, I brought my list. I brought my <laughs> cheat sheet. <laughs> Um, well, over the nine years I was in television, I probably entered, interviewed 50 or 60 major people, including three presidents of the United States, Carter, Carden, uh, Carter, Carter Ford and Reagan. Um, oh, people like uh, Ben Vereen, uh, Lauren Bacall, Clint Eastwood, Michael Jackson. I know everybody who's going to ask about Michael Jackson, so I throw <laughs> that in there right now, okay? <laughs> Carol Channing, Julie Andrews, Deborah Carr, um, Andy Gibb, Paul McCartney, wow. just lots of people. And then later on, Luciano Pavarotti, Andy Gibb, um, let's see who else, Liberace, yeah, really? Liberace, who let me try on his ring, and his no. hands were massive. <laughs> and so my two fingers could fit inside of one of his rings. Um, Emmy Lou Harris, Glenn Campbell, Charlie Pride, Julian Bond, and on, Andrew Young was one of my favorite interviews, and on and on and on. I really had a very blessed and happy career doing that. Well, you know, we actually also have a, a clip of some of those interviews. Yeah, so you do. Go ahead and take yeah. a look. <laughs> we'll go ahead and take, okay. a, take a look at that clip. Cesar Chavez is head of the UFW. He's here in San Francisco to boycott Chiquita Bananas. Not at all what I expected, Cesar. I thought it was going to be lettuce. Why bananas? Well, Bananas, it's uh, owned, you know, by the former uh, United Fruit Company, which is now United Brands, which also owns Sun Harvest, which is the lettuce company we're striking, so that uh, we're putting pressure on one company, hoping that we will break that company to break ranks from the other growers who don't want to negotiate, sign a contract, and maybe set up pattern that way, and we can solve the dispute. You've decided to carry this boycott into San Francisco, and you've decided to do it in front of a Safeway store, which is not, in fact, selling Chiquita Bananas, but Del Monte products. Why, why here? Oh, we came here because this is a good spot uh, from many years of boycotting uh, stores and, uh, and gallo wine and uh, grapes and so forth. We found this to be one of the best spots. Gladys, the first hit you had, Every Beat of My Heart, mm -hmm. long time ago. Yeah. I can remember you doing that in performance, really? by the way. I sure can. That's great. That was the beginning of it all for you, wasn't it? Uh, well, not really. Recording-wise, it was the beginning for us, but the Pips and I actually started in 1953. How did that happen? It was by accident, wasn't it? A birthday party or something of that nature? Yeah. Um, well, I had been singing since I was four. Yeah. Uh, and I went on Ted Mack Original Amateur Hour when I was seven, and I won the grand prize on that show. After being in the business, you know, so young and traveling so much because I toured with Mr. Mack for a year after the show, uh, I wanted to go back to school, you know, and get with my little friends and stuff. And then after I got back in school, I kind of missed the business, you know. Charlton Heston is a living legend. He really is. <laughs> <laughs> Star of Ben-Hur, The Ten Commandments, Oscar winner for the Ben-Hur role, also uh, in The Planet of the Apes, and so many movies that I can't even begin to mention them all, but I will say I've seen a great many of them, and I'm very happy to be sitting next to you, Mr. Heston. Well, I'm very, very happy, happy to borrow your audience tonight. You have been a Hollywood star for some 20 years, and during that time you've played so many roles that they're just too innumerable to count. Do you have any particular favorites yourself? No, I think the next one's going to be the favorite. I always think that. <laughs> What did you learn the most in that era, and then how do you think you can apply that to someone, even myself, or someone else that is you know, walking in this pathway? There is a tremendous amount of hard work in this industry. It is not frivolity. 
It is not glamour. I can remember pushing couches and $500 silk dresses onto the set because we were going live in 10 minutes mm -hmm. and the couches weren't there. Okay. Um, it is even harder when you are married, have children, and are trying to bring your family together and keep them together. So um, it is a very tough business that requires a lot of tenacity, persistence, and I think above all, a very good education. And I don't mean broadcasting education as much as I mean having a history background, philosophy, psychology, and economics, political science. I think that's what we're missing in the industry today. We just don't have reporters and people right. on TV who have that kind of background. And it shows. Yeah, it does. It shows. It, does. it definitely does. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Amy's going to be taking uh, questions from the audience uh, for Trudy. So there's a lot of information still to be had. So make sure you come right back. Sacramento Filmworks is done in partnership with Access Sacramento. It airs on the first Saturday of each month on Comcast Channel 17 and AT&T Uverse Channel 99. And welcome back. We've got some really wonderful questions from our audience, actually, for Trudy. So we're going to get started here. And you've got a question, right? Yeah. Go ahead and stand. And your name is? I'm Graham. Um, did you find it difficult to make your celebrity guests comfortable during their interviews? Not really. Um, one that stands out to me the most is Clint Eastwood. The Clint Eastwood that I got to know was not who I was told he was going to be. I was told that he was distant, that he really wasn't very approachable. The first thing he did on the golf course was say, hey, look, it's about to rain. Would you like to go inside and have a drink? And I said, what? <laughs> 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 this can't be the Clint Eastwood that everybody's been talking about. So no, um, guests really were, they wanted to be on the shows. They wanted to talk about their books. They wanted to sell their records, as in the case of Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, and then Michael Jackson as a solo artist. So they were eager, and they were comfortable with me, and I was comfortable with them. I had started, as I said, at a very young age, and I had started meeting stars at a very young age. By the time I was 12, Sammy Davis Jr. had been in my home. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was not, it was not uncomfortable for me to be with them so they responded in kind, and I really appreciated that too. Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Woo well, let's ask another question. All right. And your name? Hi, my name is Marissa. Uh, looking back on your career, what would you say are some of your most memorable moments? I have a few, quite a few actually. One of the most memorable moment, moments was flying solo in a 1942 Stearman training plane. Navy training plane for about 10 minutes above the Lawrence Livermore lab with a stunt pilot who then took me on the 360 roll <laughs> where I almost lost my stomach and my microphone <laughs> about 2,000 feet in the air. That was one. The other one was uh, flying in a hot air balloon in not the way you would expect. I was holding on to the tether strap on the outside. I was not in the balloon basket. And the whole balloon started to rise. And there I am in a white dress rising above. <laughs> Very embarrassing moment. Very embarrassing wow, moment. Yeah. All right. yeah, I can see that. OK. All right, we've got one more question. And your name? Hi, I'm Bridget. And your question? Um, I'm wondering, have you ever interviewed a guest who refused to answer a question or found a way to work around to answering it? Uh, I've had difficulties with a couple of guests, and uh, one that comes to mind is George C. Scott, who decided to clean the silverware rather than to <laughs> actually engage me. He was the one star, along with Jane Fonda, who demanded that we set up in a different place in Delancey Street Restaurant in San Francisco, and we were five minutes to air, live air. So, yeah, there have been some, some difficulties, but you know, you got to read the book. I'm going to do a book. It's actually already titled. It's called Storytime, the Color of My Country. Mm. 
And I started writing it about 10 years ago when, uh, actually maybe a little longer than that, when my daughter, who is now second generation in television, actually here in Sacramento, kind of chided me that I needed to put some of this stuff down before I got too old and gray to remember what was going on. <laughs> and my son was, you know, giving me that same sort of thing, so I decided to start writing. And uh, it will be finished one of these days, really soon, we hope. Thanks, You're welcome. Bridget. That's wonderful. Wow. Thank you so much, audience. That was fantastic. Fantastic yeah. questions. You know, you're going to have to come back on the show uh, I'd love when your to. book is done because there, there, was just, there was just way too much to get in in just one show. But uh, Thank you. we really appreciate you coming and joining us. Everyone, Trudy Talaferro. Thank you. We really appreciate all of you being here. We'll be right back. Keep up to date on Sacramento area film industry news or to view previous episodes of Sacramento Filmworks, simply go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash NCFC TV or you can connect with our YouTube channel by going to our website at ncfc.tv. Well, that's it for this episode. Sacramento Filmworks is the project of the Northern California Filmmakers Coalition in partnership with Access Sacramento. We'd like to thank our spotlight guests, Mamie Jean and Onyx Pike, as well as our industry expert, Trudy Talaferro. I'm Craig Deleuze. And I'm Mamie Henry. What a wonderful show. I hope you learned a lot because I know I sure okay. did, and we had a wonderful guest who has taken us on a wonderful journey. This has been brought to you by Sacramento Filmworks, where we show you how, how film, film works. works. See you next time. <laughs>